Hello again YouTube and welcome back to Just Get A Tesla. This video is part of my How It Works series and today I'm going to review the external features of the Tesla Model Y. There's two ways to open your Tesla Model 3 or Model Y. The first one is if you use the key card that you get given when you collect the car and you'll get two of these. Keep one of them in your wallet or purse or handbag or whatever it is because they're a handy thing to have around. Because the main way that I get in and out of the car is using my phone as a key. But what if your phone goes flat? Or what if your phone gets stolen or gets dropped in the water or something? It's useful to have just as a backup. So to open the car using the key card, simply put it on the pillar here and the car opens. And then if you want to lock it again, just do the same thing in reverse and it locks again. The simplest way to get in and out of your Tesla is to not even think about it. Set your phone up as your key and then all you need to do is walk up to the car and open the door. The door handles on Tesla Model 3 and Tesla Model Y do confuse a few people who aren't used to them because they're completely flush to the body to make it more aerodynamic. So how do you open them? Well, use your thumb, quite literally, thumb into the wide bit, the main handle comes out and pull. Tesla use frameless windows in the Model 3 and the Model Y, which means that when you open the door, it drops down ever so slightly. And when you close it again, it raises back up. What this means is you've got this lovely sleek look on the exterior and honestly there is just something fantastic about frameless doors, frameless windows, so that when you close it again that's just fabulous. Using your phone as your car key means that you can just walk away. So if you have walk away door locking set up, the further away you walk from the car eventually it registers the fact that you've gone away and it will lock. One advantage of Tesla is the way that its cars are designed from the ground up as an EV, and that means it makes really efficient use of all of the space. As an example, in this car, you have got a trunk or a fruit, or whatever else you want to call it. Basically, storage space under the front where the engine should be. And this is a really, really useful space. I keep my charging cables, both the Type 2 and the granny charger cable, the first aid kit, and I've also got a tyre inflation kit in here as well. Also, this is 117 litres of wipe down space. So if you've got muddy stuff that you don't want to go in the car, dump it in here, wipe it down, it's absolutely fine. As you can see, it's got a light as well. And this is also where you find your windscreen washer bottle. The trunk isn't powered, so to close it, push it down with your hands, put one either side of the Tesla logo, and give it a gentle push. The boot is fantastic in the Tesla Model Y, absolutely enormous. To open it, just push the button, and the tailgate swings itself open. To close it again, just press the button, and it comes down. But, here's the neat bit. If you've got, say, you're in a garage, and you don't want it to open too far, just stop it, pull it down to wherever you want it to. So let's say that is as high as you can go, or you want it there, or you want it there. Just press and hold the button until it bongs. And now, when you open it again, that's as high as it'll go. So you can set the boot to only open as high as you've got the space for. And that is a really cool feature. The boot really is absolutely huge. I mean, properly huge. And it doesn't just stop with this ridiculous amount of space that you've got in the main part. You've got these side bins, which actually go down a long way. You can fit a whole load of stuff in there as well. You can also get lid covers as a third party accessory if you want those. And then under here, look, <laughs> you've got all of this space which, I mean, you can fit, again, a whole pile of stuff. I regularly put shopping and things in there if you want the bags to stand upright, and they just stay in place. There's even a bit of space under here, which I can't get at, there you go, where you can fit cables and things if you want to put them in there. The boot is absolutely friggin' huge. And if you haven't got enough space, and you always need more space, pull the levers, and drop the seats forward, you have now got 2,100 litres of space behind the rear seats. 
that is van size and if you want to see what it's like on a tip run have a look at the video which is in the description the charge flap is nicely hidden it's a brilliant piece of design where you'd hardly tell it was there and if you want to open it and the car's unlocked simply push it and it comes open and then just give it a nudge and down it goes if you're using one of tesla's chargers the easiest way to open the flap is very simply press the button on the top and the flap opens like magic once you connect the car to the power it starts flashing rapidly green until it connects and then it's going to carry on showing you green to show you that the car is charging and then if you look onto the screen that also says the same thing this is exactly the same with any of the tesla superchargers quite literally just push the button and plug in and again to stop charging and to unplug touch the button on the top and hold it the light changes and off it comes and the flap closes by itself again a little bit of tesla magic and i think the best thing about tesla charging is not only is the flap an absolute doddle i mean literally opening and closing by itself but if you are using a tesla supercharger then you don't even need to think about how you're paying because you've got a credit card on your tesla account and it bills you automatically another way that tesla just makes your life a little bit easier there is another video in this how it works series on charging coming up make sure you like and subscribe to the channel hit the bell icon then you'll know when that video is going to drop there's an awful lot of cameras on a tesla there's these ones here on the wing, which shows the indicators. There are these ones here in the center pillar. You have got cameras underneath the boot. And then when you go around to the front, you've actually got three of them on the windscreen. A narrow angle, a wide angle, and a standard angle. And that means you've got fantastic view for the car's brain where it's looking at all of the traffic around you and the road signs and the lane markings and it's thanks to the cameras that autopilot is so brilliant the wing mirrors are auto folding they are auto dimming they're auto heated you name it they do them they will also tip downwards when you go into reverse if you set that up as the mode on the screen we should probably talk about the wheels. This car is on standard 19 inch Gemini wheels, which are fitted with these wheel covers. Now, I know what you're thinking. Are wheel covers really sexy in 2023? Well, honestly, having curbed plenty of alloys over the years and things like diamond cut wheels, what on earth are they thinking? I actually think these are really good because they do protect your alloy wheel. But if you want your alloy wheel, simply pull them off. And there it is and you know what it's not a bad design and you can get a center cap for that with a nice tesla logo and you can get locking wheel nuts and whatever else you want so you've got a choice do you want alloys or do you want covers honestly i'm not entirely sure which is looking best so i think you guys should tell me in the comments let's put it this way it's much cheaper to replace one of these covers than it is to get your wheel refurbished or to have to replace it completely if you bang it. We have to talk about the overall design of the car. I know that this is a bit of a controversial vehicle from the way that it looks because it's not an SUV. It's kind of a crossover utility vehicle thing. It's got a raised ride height off the floor, but it looks quite different to a lot of cars. And I think it's that that's got people saying that it's ugly or it looks like a some kind of guppy fish or something really weird but here's the thing this is why because this is built from the ground up completely from a blank sheet of paper the packaging is completely different to the way that it would be on any other vehicle what do i mean by that well you don't have to have an enormous bonnet because there's no engine, there's no radiator, there's not all of the mechanical gubbins that you've got to package either in the front of a piston driven car or in an EV where it's built on the same production line with the same production process where you've still got to be able to drop a whole load of things into the front. You don't need to do any of that and that means you can just shorten the nose and I think it's that short nose that makes people think huh, it's kind of a cab forward design which is really refreshing to me because it's been thought through and it's been packaged really cleverly you've also got 117 liters of storage in the front which again is something that most other cars simply don't have and then the rest of it the way that you've got this wonderful aerodynamic swoop across the back look this is all about slipping through the air as 
easily as possible and being as aerodynamic as possible to save energy so that you go further. That's a good thing, surely. And when you get to the inside of the car, and I have got an interior how it works video coming up very soon, have a look at the glass roof. There is acres and acres and acres of space despite the swoopy roof line. So it's not like it's compromised, it's just streamlined. And that will do it for this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon, all of those wonderful things so that you can see my videos when they get uploaded. And I'll see you very soon on the next one here on Just Get A Tesla.